Season of the Witch is in full swing with some new systems and with new opportunities for loot. In this video, I'll give you a complete guide to the season to maximize your loot, aka every goal each season, red borders to craft the weapons. Also, I asked the question, which weapon should you get, but we need to first start off with the activities. Season of the Witch still keeps the two activity system we had last season, and in my opinion, did it better with Sabbath Inspire and Altars of Summoning. Sabbath Inspire is the guy that you don't worry about if you're Salvage. Unlike Salvage, Spire, not this one, has a high enemy density. Like I feel like John Wick with the Graviton Lance instead of a pencil watching everything die in grape flavored flashes of death. Anyway, same idea as Salvage, you get asked to do a thing, you kill everything, next encounter, repeat, boss. The encounters rotate around Arc, Solar, Void, meaning that in one run you can get this funny Void Rock, and another you can get the Synaptic Spear. The encounters I have seen are moving Solar Crystals, killing Abominations, mailing Arc Crystals, destroying Void Crystals, killing a Hive Light Bear, and ducking for a Relic, which is what I mentioned earlier with the funny Void Rock and Synaptic Spear. Overall, you will do the same things. This is week one, so things are subject to change, like bosses and encounters. The encounters, though, usually entail killing a hive light bearer, so uh, have fun doing that. The boss encounter, though, is randomized between a score boss and a boss fight of three light bearer hive. In the future, it seems like there will be one more, but we don't know when we'll get that. There's also secrets in this mission. I'll show you the secrets to getting more loot from this activity later in the loot section of this video. After you complete the mission, you get a chest and you get your loot from your witch key if you have one. Later in the season, there will be a legend version of the activity which will drop higher tier weapons and rare materials or at least what I assume. Next activity, Altars of Summoning is the next evolution of Court of Oryx. You can deposit an offering, gauge from activities, and depending on the tier of offering, the higher the difficulty. Higher tier offerings give more progress, once completed, indicated by this bar. Once you fill up the bar completely, you can pick up your loot and cash out, but if you want to stay, you can do it more again. You can also leave when you want, just do whatever. The encounters are also randomized, so each run might feel a little bit different from one another. The encounters so far are the Void Crystals, where you need to kill Abominations while it's raining Screebs. That one isn't fun. Another one is that you need to charge Art Crystals and kill a Wizard. Another one is where you need to collect Tribute and dunk it at a Flaming Totem or Altar, whatever this is. There's also the Ternary Mines, which are three Vex bosses similar to D1's old boss fight from the end of the campaign, in which you fight Precursor Vex. Nice to see them again. And Precursor Wyverns are here. I don't know if that's important, but we'll see what they do with the Vex. You will also have to stop Hobgoblins from sacrificing. If they do, you need to shoot these boxes to make the bosses not immune to your attacks. There could also be some more encounters that I'm missing, but those are the few I remember. Also look at the trailer, there's some encounters down in the game as of week 1. This triumph right here confirms that there are 4 missing, so we'll see them soon. The tier of offering gives it a higher difficulty as I mentioned earlier. If you have a group doing powerful offerings, I suggest bring a machine gun for boss damage and shriekers along with a light bearer hive. Those, what to see, those few things seem to be the most annoying to deal with. Rocket launcher is also a great weapon, same as I said with the machine gun. I can also see linears being used here too. Most common shields type I've been seeing is arc and solar. You could bring hard light or a weapon of your choice to really help against those shields. You also bring the new exotic Exterus, if I'm pronouncing that right, which is a grenade launcher that doesn't need to be reloaded. And I suggest you really have fun with it. The catalyst also synergizes well with the arc subclasses as kills make it amplified and it enrages faster while amplified. If you have tessellation, first of all, bro, not everyone has that type of money. Second of all, thank you. It, when I heard it's a good gun, which I mean, makes sense. Bungie wouldn't be stupid to make their pre-order for their next big expansion a bad weapon. Kinetic could be whatever you need. It could be Arbalest, Quicksilver, whatever weapon. I've been using a Chill Clip Fusion Rifle, Graviton Lance, and Commemoration. Uh, that's my loadout. If um, loadouts weren't broken, I would change my loadouts, but uh, no, I can't. Team Comp should be any of these that I mentioned. Any type of Warlock, besides Stasis, Daybreak, Storm Trance, or any roaming super. Any Titan in all honesty is pretty good. Hunters, I don't feel like really got it here, besides Tether, Strand, and Stasis maybe. And the rest of Hunter doesn't really matter, in my opinion. Bring High Resilience, I like me, I'm stupid. Bring Resistances, good builds, bring friends that are good at the game, and generally have fun. That is powerful offerings, but I've built this fits the entire activity. With that out of the way, I want to do some housekeeping, or well, helm keeping. 
If this video has been helpful so far, then hit that like button. Also hit subscribe, it supports me doing this. And thank you for my last few videos, as these videos have done really good. And all I have to thank is you guys. Uh, if it sounds like I'm nasally or whatever in this video, it's because I am sick. Now, uh, back into the guide. Now, the Electron Divination in the Athenaeum. This is the seasonal area in the helm. When you go through this portal, you can focus your ingrams for the season of the Witch and do stuff with the Deck of Whispers. More on that in a little bit. As you play the season, you can get opaque cards, which can give things like one-time rewards. At max, there are 55 opaque cards across the season for the Electron Divination. Opaque cards can also be Minor or Major Arcana. Minor Arcana will be seasonal upgrades like Deep Sight Focusing. Major Arcana gives a mini quest, and once that mini quest is complete, gives a card for the Deck of Whispers. A Deck of Whispers is a tarot card inspired deck of cards which draws a card randomly during a Season of the Witch encounter. They'll draw one randomly during Savage Inspire or Altars of Summoning, and they give buffs. You can read where the buffs are in the Athenaeum just by looking at them. You can add or remove them. But for now, there are only five as of week one. If you get opaque cards, you play the season, and they'll drop randomly. There's also some that drop from activities too, but I really haven't seen them too much. There are also these cards that require attunements, which no one has really figured out yet. What we do know is that it does not correlate to your subclass. There's also a card here right behind this tree next to this odd looking swamp fella. You do look pretty cool though. Like other seasons, you have a rank system, which you can also get opaque cards, so suggest you claim these for those rewards. To add one more thing, the exotic rotator node is here this season, and you can get red border weapons from the previous seasons. Passage gives haunted weapons and dead man's tail. Box obscure with season of the risen weapons with dead messenger and seraph shield with seraph weapons and revision zero. The exotics are also craftable, so have fun with that. One thing I do hope for though is the Hawkmoon mission and Outbreak mission, but that is besides the reason of this video. I do know people will also love the Whisper mission, but Whisper has its own problems mostly because it's on IO. I now want to talk about how you will get loot this season. At the simplest, what you'll be doing is playing Sav's Inspire, or playing Altars of Summoning, or the other way around. Those, those are the main ways you'll be getting your seasonal armor and weapons. In these, there are many opportunities for extra loot which I'll mention in a few seconds. You also have your Ingrams to roll the dice and helping get a red border or whatever you want. Focusing exists for that once a week red border, or if you want a specific weapon. The secret chest by shooting these ruins with a solar or void weapon in the Savage Inspire activity. They only give loot once a week and on subsequent openings give you reputation and glimmer, or they only work once. I'm assuming it's weekly because I don't know why they'd only work once. There are also two chests as of week one, and according to this triumph, we'll see more. It says there are four, so I'm assuming next week we'll see one more, and then another week. We'll see how this goes. This Shrieker that can also spawn in this boss room. This Shrieker can also spawn in the boss room of Savage Inspire, which can give you some random loot, including a red border weapon. The Shrieker spawns randomly, so keep the lookout for it. You can kill it pretty easily with like a Chaos Reach or a Nova Bomb, so just keep an eye on it. Which keys are another way to get more loot, they'll drop from seasonal activities, and we'll have more ways to get them as you play the season, as you earn upgrades. Again, focus key. Again, focusing assists allowing for seasonal loot and recovered Red War weapons, which is pretty neat, I would say. Uh, if you're looking just to get some good guns, then what should you grab? Well, Locus Locutus is a Stasis 90 RPM sniper, which has some notable perks if you roll with opening shot, headstone, a new perk called High Ground, which gives bonus damage to enemies below you. There's also Overflow, Discord, and Keep Away. Next weapon is Eremite, a solar fusion rifle, which can roll with Reservoir Burst, Golden Tricorn, and Controlled Burst. You can also roll with a new perk, Heal Clip, which when you get a kill, then reload, you have a burst of cure effect around you. Last one I want to talk about, because to be honest, these weapons are kind of meh. Anyways, Briah's Love, which can roll Explosive Payload and Rapid Hit, which is all that matters in my opinion. Won't go over the recovered Red War weapons too much, but there's Nightshade and Strand 450, which can roll with Hatchling. Uh, if you remember this weapon, this weapon used to be just Kinetic now, so there's Strand weapons, which is pretty cool. There is the Showrunner, which is a Kinetic 900 RPM SMG, which is a run-of-the-mill SMG. There is a Dead, there is Deadpan Delivery, our Shotgun, which most importantly can roll with Trench Barrel, and our final weapon, Persuader, a Void Sniper, which is another sniper rifle. Nothing really else. That is where I want to end it with Season of the Witch, going over the activities and finishing with the loot. If this video is helpful, then subscribe and watch these videos on screen for more content. Thank you guys. i um, glad to finish this video. I had to record this twice because the original was recorded on my webcam microphone by accident. 
uh, see ya.